Hello, my name is Brendan Carroll, and I am the host for this story. I chose The Children of Lear for a very simple reason. Despite the fact I don't remember it much myself growing up, this is still a story that many Irish parents read to their kids, and my parents did read to me. On top of this, when I asked my dad, who will be reading this story because he actually has an accent, about Irish children's tales, this was the first one that came to mind for him. So, I chose the story because of its place in Irish culture, and because it on some level means a lot to my dad. But either way, I hope you enjoy this classic Irish fairy tale. King Lear of Ireland had four young children who were cared for tenderly at first by their stepmother, the new queen. But there came a time when she grew jealous of the love their father had for them, and she resolved she would not stand for it any longer. One day she took them to drive in her chariot, Fanula who was eight years old and her three younger brothers, Aid, Fikra and Little Con. They were beautiful children, the legend says, with skin as white and soft as swan's feathers and with large blue eyes and very sweet voices. Reaching a lake, she told them that they might bathe in the clear water, but as soon as they were in, she struck them with a fairy wand, for she was a druid who had magical power. She turned them into four beautiful snow-white swans, but they still had human voices. Fanula turned to the stepmother and said, This wicked deed of yours should be punished, for the doom that awaits you will surely be worse than ours. Then Fanula asked, How long should we be in the shape of swans? For three hundred years, said the woman, on smooth Lake Darva, then three hundred years on the Sea of Moyle, and then three hundred years at Inishglore on the Great Western Sea, until St. Patrick should come to Ireland and bring the Christian faith, and until you hear the Christian bell, you shall not be free. Neither your power nor mine can bring you back to human shape, but you shall keep your human reason and your Gaelic speech, and you should sing music so sweet that all who hear it shall gladly listen. Before long their father King Lear came to the shore and heard their singing. He asked how they came to have human voices. We are your four children, said Fanula, changed into swans by our stepmother's jealousy. Then come live with me, said their sorrowing father. We are not permitted to leave the lake, she said, or live with our people any more. But we are allowed to live together and keep our reason and our speech, and sing sweet music to you. Then they sang, and the king and all his followers were first amazed and then lulled to sleep. King Lear returned and met the cruel stepmother at her father's palace. When her father, King Bove, was told what she had done, he was hot with anger. This wicked deed, he said, shall bring harsher punishment on you than the innocent children, for their suffering shall end, but yours never shall. King Bove asked her what form of existence would be most terrible to her. She replied, that of a demon of the air. Be it so, said her father, who had also druidical power. He struck her with his wand and she became a bat and flew away with a scream and the legend says she is still a demon of the air and shall be a demon of the air till the end of time. After this the people of all races that were in Erin used to come and camp by the lake and listen to the swans. The happy were made happier by the song and those who were in grief or illness or pain forgot their sorrows and were lulled to a peaceful calmness. There was peace in all that region while war and chaos filled other lands. Huge changes took place in three centuries. Towers and castles rose and fell, villages were built and destroyed, generations were born and died, and still the swan children lived and sang until at the end of 300 years they flew away, as was decreed to the stormy sea of Moyle, and from that time it was made a law that no one should kill a swan in Ireland. Besides the sea of Moyle they found no longer the peaceful and wooded shores they had known, but only steep and rocky coasts and a wild, wild sea. There came a great storm one night, and the swans knew they could not keep together. So they resolved that if separated, they would meet at a rock called Carg Naron. Fanula reached there first and took her brothers under her wings, all wet, shivering and exhausted. Many such nights followed, and in one terrible winter storm, when they nestled together in Carg Naron, the water froze into solid ice around them, and their feet and wings were so frozen to the rock that when they moved they left the skin of their feet the quills of their wings and the feathers of their breasts clinging there. When the ice melted and they swam out into the sea, their bodies smarted with pain until their feathers grew once more. One day they saw a glittering troop of horsemen approaching along the shore and knew that they were their own kind, though from far generations back, the Daedanon. They greeted each other with joy for the Daedanon had been sent to seek for the swans and on returning to their chiefs they told what had passed. The chief said, we cannot help them, but we are glad they are living, and we know that at last the enchantment will be broken, and they will be freed from their sorrows. So passed their lives until Fanula sang one day, 
The second woe had passed, the second period of 300 years, when they flew out on the broad ocean as was decreed and went to the island of Inish Glora. There they spent the next 300 years amid yet wilder storms and yet colder winds. No more the peaceful shepherds and living neighbours were around them, but often the sailor and fisherman in his little boat saw the white gleam of their wings, or heard the sweet notes of their song, and knew that the children of Lear were near. But the time came when the 900 years of banishment were ended, and they might fly back to their father's old home, Fianna. Flying for days above the sea, they landed at the palace once so well known, but everything was changed by time. The walls of their father's palace were crumbled and rainwashed. So sad was the sight that they remained one day only and flew back to Inish Glora, thinking that if they must be alone forever they would live where they had lived last, not where they had been reared. One May morning, as the children of Lear floated in the air around the island of Inish Glora, they heard a faint bell sounding across the eastern sea. The mist lifted and they saw far off beyond the waves a vision of a stately white-robed priest, with attendants around him on the Irish shore. They knew it must be St. Patrick, who was bringing, as had been foretold, Christianity to Ireland. Sailing through the air, above the blue sea, towards their native coast, they heard the bell once more, now near and distinct, and they knew that all evil spirits were fleeing away, and that their own hopes were to be fulfilled. As they approached the land, St. Patrick stretched out his hand and said, Children of Lear, you may tread your native land again. Sweet Swan Sister Fanula said, If we tread our native land, it can only be to die after a life of nine centuries. Baptize us while we are yet living. When they touched the shore, the weight of all those centuries fell upon them. They resumed their human bodies, but they appeared old, pale and wrinkled. Then St. Patrick baptized them, and they died. But even as he did so, a change swiftly came over them. They laid side by side, once more children, in their white night clothes, as when their father, Lear, long centuries ago, had kissed them at evening and seen their blue eyes close in sleep, and had touched with gentle hand their white foreheads and their golden hair. Their time of sorrow was ended and their last swan song sung, but the cruel stepmother seems yet to survive in her bat-like shape, and a single glance at her weird and malicious little face will lead us to doubt whether she has yet fully atoned for her sin. <laughs>